Lita Lestrange was fleshed out a lot in the crimes of Grindelwald and we got to see her very dark and interesting past. To make this video, not only did I see the movie three times, but I also read the entire screenplay for the film. There are many things the script conveyed for her character, including feelings she had, thoughts she had, and much more. So this video will dive much deeper than just the films. Now before I start, I feel like I'm obligated to warn you that there will be major spoilers for the crimes of Grindelwald in this video, so there's your warning. At the end, I'm also going to give my own theory on who Lita was in love with, so let's get started. Let's first start with Lita's parents. She came from an important French line. Her mother, Lorena, came from a pure-blood family and married a man named Mustafa Kama. The two were very in love and they eventually had a son together named Yusuf. One night, however, a man named Corvus Lestrange used the Imperius Curse on Lorena. Now having complete control of her against her will, he seduced and abducted her, making her leave her home and family. A 12-year-old Yusuf tried to stop her, but she pulled her hand away. When Yusuf kept trying desperately, Corvus Lestrange shot a spell at him that sent them sprawling back. Corvus Lestrange got Lorena pregnant, and she died giving birth to Lita. The Lestrange family tree was an odd one because it only recorded the men. The women were recorded as flowers. They were beautiful, but separate. Lestrange was desperate for a son to continue his pureblood line, and Lita could not do that for him. Because of this, he never cared about her and never loved her. As Lita grew older, it became clear that she was the spitting image of her beautiful mother. Lestrange married not three months after Lorena's death, and he loved her no more than he loved Lita. He soon became delighted, however, when his second child was born. A boy, Corvus Lestrange Jr. Lestrange, who had never known love, was now filled with it. Lestrange soon got word of Mustafa Kama's son coming after Corvus. In Mustafa's dying breath, he charged his son Yusuf to kill the person Lestrange loved best in the world as revenge for Lestrange taking his wife. When Lestrange got word of this, he sent Corvus along with Lita to America. He sent their half-house elf named Irma with them so that she could use her magic to protect them. But because Irma was only half-elf, her magic was weak and therefore left no trace for Yusuf to follow. On the ship, Corvus was screaming and crying and wouldn't stop. The lights on the ship suddenly began to flicker and Irma left the room to see what was going on. Lita watched her baby brother, transfixed by him. She wanted to be free of him and his screaming, but only for a moment, just one moment. She picked him up and walked to the room straight across from theirs. There lay baby Credence. He was quiet and peaceful, quite the opposite of Corvus. He was on board with his aunt, who had left the room to see what was going on just like Irma did. Lita switched the babies, putting her brother Corvus in Credence's bed and taking Credence out of the room with her. She planned to switch them back later, but she never got the chance. The ship was beginning to sink, and Irma grabbed baby Credence, who she thought was Corvus. Meanwhile, Credence's aunt grabbed Corvus, who she thought was her nephew. All of them were able to get off the ship, but Lita, Irma, and Credence were in a different rescue boat than Credence's aunt and Corvus. When a wave hit their boat, it tipped over. Credence's aunt re-emerged from under the water, but Corvus did not. She dove back under, reaching for him, but she couldn't get to him. Lita watched as her baby brother fell through the water until Corvus disappeared, forever lost. This image would go on to haunt Lita's nightmares for the rest of her life. She held herself responsible for her brother's death, and she alone knew the truth. The truth that ate Lita up from the inside. She felt guilt, remorse, and immeasurable pain. She looked at herself as a different person from then on. She saw herself as a monster. When they were brought to safety, Irma, who still thought that Credence was Corvus, signed him over to Mrs. Barebone, and Lita was raised as an only child from then on. She was partly glad to see Credence go, because all he did was remind her of the horrible mistake that she had made. When Lita turned 11, she attended Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. She was sorted into Slytherin, something that was not a surprise to anyone, given her family's heritage. Lita got in trouble a lot while in school. She had no friends and was bullied pretty often. 
She was an outcast and didn't enjoy school very much because of this. People knew of her family history and judged her for it. In her third year, while everyone was getting ready to leave for winter break, a 13-year-old Lita was standing alone inside an empty classroom, listening to everyone with their trunks and owls. Two Gryffindor girls passing by were talking about her. They said that she was annoying and made fun of her name. They then said that she stays at school because her family doesn't want her home. An angry Lita came out and pointed her wand at one of them. She shot a spell at her that made her mouth disappear. Very triumphant, Lita fled the scene. The other Gryffindor girl ran down the hall screaming for Professor McGonagall, saying that Lestrange had done it again. McGonagall and a bunch of other onlookers chased after Lita, who had a wide grin on her face. To get away, she ducked into a cupboard. A sound behind her made her jump, and she noticed a boy named Newt, who was a third-year Hufflepuff. Newt had clearly been using this cupboard for a long time, as there were tanks containing creatures and a nest with an injured raven chick that he was tending to. The two knew of each other, but hadn't talked much considering how different their houses were. When she came closer, Newt commented on the fact that a raven was Lita's family emblem for the Lestrange family. He then handed her the raven, and as he placed the chick gently in her hands, Lita looked into Newt's eyes and saw him plainly for the first time. This made her smile affectionately at him. The two became fast friends, and Newt's love for magical creatures rubbed off on Lita. They often took care of and looked for magical creatures on the grounds of Hogwarts, and the two grew very close. The chemistry between them was clear, and they developed feelings for one another past friendship. During their sixth year, 16-year-olds Lita and Newt attended Dumbledore's Defense Against the Dark Arts class that focused on a bogger, a creature that turns into your greatest fear when you approach it. When it was Lita's turn, she hesitated, but Dumbledore encouraged her, whispering in her ear that everyone's scared of something. A group of girls in the back stood together, enjoying her fear, and one of them said that they were looking forward to this. When Lita stepped forward, the thing that had been haunting her all of her life suddenly reappeared, bringing back all of her guilt, shame, and horror. The boggart had turned into her baby brother, falling deeper and deeper into the water. Bluish green light reflected on every horrified face in the room. Lita let out a sob and ran out. As she ran, her emotions were consuming her. She felt so much shame and grief. She could run from the room, but she couldn't run from the truth that she thought she was a murderer and a monster that killed her own baby brother. She went to Beltruckle Island on the Hogwarts grounds. Newt eventually came out to find her tear-stained and puffy-eyed. She told Newt that she didn't want to talk about it. Newt didn't say anything, but instead held out his hand, and she let him pull her up. He took her past a few trees until they reached one that Beltruckles were climbing on. Newt started to explain facts about them, but he trailed off when he realized that Lita wasn't looking at them, but rather looking intensely into his eyes. Newt reached across to her and put the Beltruckle from his wrist onto hers, and as he did so, their hands grazed. Lita and Newt continued to experiment and raise magical creatures. The two of them got into all sorts of trouble. Newt once told a professor that there were no strange creatures, only blinkered people, which got him detention for a month. Lita set off a dung bomb under his desk just so that she could join Newt in detention. One day, however, Lita took it too far. One of her experiments involving a Jarvie went wrong and endangered the life of another student. Not only that, but it violated laws prohibiting possession of this creature. She was to be expelled from Hogwarts. Newt, however, stepped up and took the blame, and it was him that was expelled instead of Lita. Lita was forever grateful to Newt for this. He allowed her to finish up her education at Hogwarts. Lita didn't see Newt for many years after he took the blame for her. I don't really know what uh, Lita likes these days. But the two continued to love one another. Newt even kept a framed picture of Lita wherever he went. Lita would eventually go on to meet Theseus Scamander, Newt's brother. The two of them fell in love and eventually got engaged. Theseus asked Newt to be his best man, and the three of them posed for a picture that was featured in a news article. However, the article got it wrong, saying that Lita was engaged to Newt instead of Theseus. An ironic mistake, seeing as both Lita and Newt were once in love. Theseus encouraged Lita to put her education to good use and join the Ministry family. She secured a job with the Ministry of Magic in London and worked alongside her fiancé. Lita read Newt's book, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, a book that became a bestseller. She loved it, especially because of her passion for magical beasts that Newt helped her form. Lita and Theseus reached out to Newt many times, but Newt ignored every invitation. Lita would later get a chance to see Newt when he had to come to the ministry for a hearing to get his ban on international travel revoked. She approached him as he was racing his boat truckle to a button 
This brought back so many memories and brought comfort to her as she remembered being on Bochuckle Island with Newt all those years ago. The two came at eye level and stared into each other's eyes. There's a lot of tension, however, a lot of history. Newt was far more uncomfortable than Lita was. She laughed as she reminisced on their Hogwarts days, but Newt didn't join in on the laughter. Lita then brought up how Newt had ignored all of her and Theseus' invitations for dinner, saying that Theseus likes spending time with him, and she adds that so does she. She couldn't look at him when she said that last part, but after she said it, she turned to look at Newt. She smiled at him and gave him the same look that she gave him on Bowtruckle Island during their Hogwarts days. Theseus then approached the two of them, making Newt look away nervously from Lita, and Theseus took Newt to his hearing. Lita looked longingly after the two brothers as they walked away. Lita started to struggle with her past again, when a rumor formed that Credence was her dead brother, Corvus Lestrange. This rumor was based on the prediction of Tycho Dodonis. It said, a son cruelly banished, despair of the daughter, return, great avenger with the wings from the water. If it was true, Lita was of course the despairing daughter, and Credence was the banished son. When people started talking about this, it brought back terrible memories for Lita, and she became anxious and worried that someone would figure out her terrible secret. Lita joined Theseus and a few other Aurors, led by Travers, the head of the magical law enforcement to Hogwarts. All of them went to see Dumbledore in the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom, but Lita did not join them. She instead wandered the castle, going to the Great Hall, and then to an abandoned classroom. The same classroom where she heard the Gryffindor girls making fun of her. Bad memories from school flooded her, but then she found a memory worth remembering. When she opened up her old desk, she saw L plus N carved into it, which stood for Lita plus Newt, something she had done while at school. She gently touched the carving and reminisced on the days when she and Newt were close, how the two of them were both outcasts, but that didn't matter because they had each other. Dumbledore interrupted her thoughts, however, when he came into the classroom. Lita said to him that she was a bad student and said that she knew Dumbledore didn't like her, but he tells her on the contrary that she was one of his cleverest students. She corrected him saying, I said bad, not stupid. He responded saying that he never thought she was bad. She then snapped at him, telling him that he was alone and that everyone else thought that she was. Memories of her brother falling deeper into the ocean led her to say that everything people said about her was right. I was wicked. Dumbledore mentioned the rumors about her brother and told her about his sister, Ariana, who died. He told her that it's never too late to free yourself and that confession brings relief. This made Lita look up terrified. What did he know? What did he suspect? Did he know her deepest, darkest secret? Did he know what happened to Corvus? Dumbledore ended the conversation, saying that regret is his constant companion and told her not to let it be hers. Later on, in the French Ministry of Magic, Theseus and the other Aurors were called into a meeting discussing Grindelwald and also the possibility that Credence could be Corvus Lestrange. Lita waited at the door until the meeting was over and asked Theseus what was going on. He told her that Grindelwald was rallying and then warned her that they're looking into Corvus's death. Before he went on the mission to Grindelwald's rally, she made him promise that he'll be careful. He agreed, and the two kissed. Lita, now knowing that the Ministry was looking into Corvus's death, became terrified that they would discover what she did. She rushed to the records room, desperate to get rid of all the evidence. She knew that this was her last chance to hide her terrible past. When her family shelf came to her in the records room, she opened it, and to her horror, it wasn't there. What lay in its place was a slip of parchment. She opened it and read that the records were moved to the Lestrange family tomb. Her heart sank, knowing that the truth might come out now. She became distracted, however, when she saw Pickett, Newt's bow truckle. She turned the Lestrange shelf around to see Newt and Tina hanging on the back of it. The three awkwardly said hi to each other, given their sort of love triangle. Just then, the three were confronted by Madigo, creatures that guard the Ministry. Lita panicked and stupefied one of them. Her spell not only failed, but caused the Madigo to multiply and become even more aggressive. Newt screamed Lita's name, worried for her life, as she climbed toward them onto the shelf. They ran through the shelves, and Newt forced both Lita and Tina into a suitcase. Newt then shot himself out on the back of the Zawu, which saved them, and took them to the Lestrange family graveyard. 
When they got out of the case, Lita took Tina's hand to help her up. While Newt and Tina worked on getting the Zawu back in the case, Lita slipped away and went into her family tomb. There, she found her half-brother, Yusuf Kama. He was about to kill Credence, but was unable to because Nagini, who was in snake form, was protecting him. Lita raised her wand and told him to stop. She was stricken but determined to do the right thing. She could have let Credence die and be free of both babies that haunted her, but she decided that that wasn't right. When Yusuf saw her, he dropped everything. He became mesmerized with Lita as she was the spinning image of their mother. Kama greeted her as his little sister, emotional as he did so. When Newt and Tina joined the group, Credence asked who he was and Kama told him the story of his mother and Lita's father. However, the story he told was the story of Corvus, not Credence. Tears started to pour down Lita's face as she relived the guilt that she had held in for so long. Yusuf began to talk about promising his father that he would go after who Lita's father loved most. He looked at Lita and said that he couldn't go after her, but then cut off. She aggressively tells him to say it, and he says, he never loved you. Explaining why Kama never attempted to kill her. He continued the story, and Lita's eyes became unfocused. These memories had haunted her nightmares for years. When Yusuf raised his wand to kill Credence, Lita finally released the truth. The truth that she killed Corvus Lestrange. She pulled out the records that had been moved from the ministry, and she showed her family tree, which sprouted up. When it got to Corvus, his name withered and died proving that this was the truth. The room went quiet as she explained how she switched the babies. When she was finished, no one said a word until Newt told her that it wasn't her fault. She looked at him and said, You're too good, Newt. You never met a monster you couldn't love. The two have a long look between each other, a look full of memories, and in Lita's case, a look full of affection. Newt had once again come through to see her differently than everyone else. The two were snapped out of it, however, by Tina, asking Lita if she knew who Credence really was. She sadly replied, saying no. The group then heard Grindelwald's rally, and they all went down to see it. Lita stood alone as she listened to Grindelwald's speech. She did not clap for him, but she did feel the pull of his charisma and studied him, wondering. Theseus and a group of oars then entered, and when she spotted Theseus, the two had a long and charged look between each other. All hell broke loose when Grindelwald ordered the crowd to leave, and he put a ring of fire around himself, the only safe space. He told them to join him or die. A fight broke out, and Grindelwald threatened Newt's life, asking if he thought Dumbledore would mourn for him. This made Lita spring into action and cry out, Grindelwald, stop! Grindelwald looked at her, then said that he knew her. He started to toy with her mind, saying, Lita Lestrange, despised entirely amongst wizards, unloved, mistreated, yet brave. So very brave. Time to come home. He stretched out a hand to her, and she contemplated it. Grindelwald looked at her, eyes narrowed. She, however, looked over at Theseus and Newt and said, I love you. She then pointed her wand at Rosier, one of Grindelwald's allies, and hit the skull that she was holding, making it explode. Grindelwald was momentarily obscured in a whirl of chaos. Lita took this second to yell to the others to go. She heroically held off Grindelwald and the flames long enough for most of them to get out, but Newt and Theseus stayed. They watched as Lita was engulfed by the flames. Theseus went wild and he tried to dive after her, but Newt grabbed him and they disapparated out of there. Lita was lost forever, never to return. Both brothers were devastated, and there was a huge question left unanswered. Who did she say I love you to? My personal theory is that she said it to Newt. There's a lot of evidence for this. First, she and Newt had a huge history together, dating back to when they were 13 years old. And the first time they met, they had instant chemistry. She's also able to relate to Newt far more than Theseus. Lita and Newt were outcasts, and they were misunderstood. But Theseus was far from that. He was the prodigy's son, the war hero, who always overshadowed Newt. Theseus Commander? The war hero? No, oh, this is his little brother. It's just hard to believe that Lita could relate to somebody like that when she herself was so far from it. There's also the fact that Newt was always there for her. He took the blame for her at Hogwarts and allowed her to finish school. Newt was the one that comforted her after the whole class saw her fear through the boggart. And he was the one that told her it was okay and that it wasn't her fault when she finally revealed her biggest insecurity and greatest fear that ate her up for most of her life. There's also the fact that after he told her that, she responded saying, you've never met a monster you couldn't love. 
She most likely was still in love with Newt, which is why she said that. She projected her feelings that she hoped Newt felt as well. It's almost as if she dropped the hint. And even as recently as a few days prior to this, she said that she missed Newt before his hearing and looked at him the same way that she did on Bochuckle Island, a time when she was in love with him. Also, the way she looked at the carving in the desk of L plus N, she touched it gently, wishing that she could go back to those days when she and Newt were so close. It's also very common to date a person that reminds you of someone you love but can't have. It's very likely that she went after Theseus, Newt's brother, because she knew that she couldn't have Newt after years of being apart. We saw this in the original series with George Weasley and Angelina Johnson. And after Fred died, George and Angelina got married and had kids together because each of them reminded the other of Fred. For Lita, I think she did the same thing here by dating Theseus. But once she saw Newt again after years of being apart, she realized that she could have Newt, not his brother, who she dated just to remind her of Newt. Newt was her first love, and I believe that he was her last love as well. It took all of the courage in the world for Lita to come clean about her darkest secret. She let the guilt from that secret haunt her nightmares, eat her up from the inside, and let it define how she saw herself. To her, she was a monster. But in the end, she sacrificed herself to save countless people, including two men that she cared about very deeply. Lita may have considered herself a monster, but in her final act, she proved that she was quite the opposite. Thank you so much for watching guys, you can follow me on social media, links for that will be down below. If you like this video, make sure you press that subscribe button to help grow the channel. I want to give a huge shout out to all my Patreons listed below. If you want to be listed on my next video, check out my Patreon, you'll be featured on the video and get a bunch of other rewards as well. Again, thank you so much for watching and look out for more great videos on the way.